thank you. You all still have jobs. <laughs> We've been doing these town halls now really since the beginning of the company. We used to do them quite frequently on a monthly basis. It's a good way to let the company know everything that's happening and make sure that everybody's plugged in. As we get bigger and bigger, it gets harder and harder. You guys get less and less access to the executives. And one of the mistakes that we made is we stopped having them for a long period of time. We've made a commitment that we're going to do these more and more. And in fact, you'll all recall that we did one quite recently. So why are we doing another one so soon? Well, the answer is we realized that we made a, a real mistake in not streaming this out to the public. So much of what companies do these days, they do behind closed doors. We think that's wrong. For a company like ours, it's wrong, especially because our audience is our customer. Our audience is the most important part. Our audience powers all of this. They pay all of your salaries, much as it pains me to admit. I like to take credit. You know, when you buy houses and have fancy cars, so I can take it away from you <laughs> out of nothing but spite, God King spite. But of course, that's not true. It's our audience who makes all of this possible. So why shouldn't we let our audience see what we're thinking. Why shouldn't we give them access to the inner workings of the company? Our paying dailywire.com members in particular have a right to know what's going on inside the heads of the executives of this company, why we're doing the things that we're doing. And you have the right to know why we're doing the things that we're doing as well. As I say, as the company gets bigger, I know sometimes you guys get pulled with the current. You don't know exactly what direction we're going. We make you do new things every day. It's just good for us to be able to take these opportunities, reset, make sure that we sync up, and that we're all charging the same hill together. And I think that includes our dailywire.com customers and audience as well. So I want to give you an update on what's going on with the company, uh, what we've accomplished so far, what fights we've picked, what fights we've won. And I want to tell you about the fights that are yet to come. First, it's been an unbelievable 2022. In the first quarter of 2022 alone, we have launched more new content than in all of 2021 combined. And since our last major town hall in November, we've launched more content than we had launched in the previous two years. I'll give you just a quick retrospective. I know the pace has been grueling, and many of you have worked on uh, any number of these projects, but not all of you have worked on all of these projects. Since our last time together, we've created a best-selling children's book, Johnny the Walrus. We launched a new Ben Shapiro series called The Search. We launched a second new Ben Shapiro series called The Third Thursday Book Club. We launched our first original feature film called Shut In. Our third feature release, The Hyperions. We also launched our first comedy special, Truth Yeller, with Adam Carolla. Our first docu-podcast, China, The Enemy Within. Our second docu-podcast, Fauci Unmasked. You didn't let me finish Fauci Unmasked with Michael Knowles, so there's no need to clap. Absolutely no need to clap. A new social media show, comment section with Brett Cooper. The female Ben Shapiro is already doing almost as well as the male Ben Shapiro. The show has really taken off. It's an amazing new edition, and it represents a new foray into social first content. And of course, we launched the number one sports show in its first week, Crane and Company. For those of you who haven't seen it, there's a bus waiting parked right outside behind the studio with that giant three faces on it, ready to head down to the final four. In that same time period, we've moved into our new studio in South Florida. We've picked up 14,000 square feet of new office space here at our Nashville campus. We've added 75,000 new paid dailywire.com members. We became the seventh largest podcast company in the country per pod track, hit our 15th consecutive month as the number one most engaged publisher in the world on Facebook, according to Newswhip. We killed it at the podcast upfronts, and we crossed the $100 million annual revenue mark for the first time. And at this moment, we have an annualized run rate of $150 million. We also signed Jonathan Isaac. We deployed Cassie Dillon to Western Ukraine. We launched our merch store. 
We helped elect a governor in Virginia after Luke Rosiak's remarkable reporting from Loudoun County. We kicked Joe Biden's ass at the United States Supreme Court, ensuring that Americans still have their most fundamental freedoms. And we launched a little razor company, which sold 45,000 razors and subscriptions in its first seven days in existence. Along the way, we also announced our first feature documentary, What is a Woman, with Matt Walsh. And in just two months, we'll be launching Gina Carano's Terror on the Prairie. It's been a hell of a run. I know that you've all worked incredibly hard. I know that this is an incredibly hard place to work. I mentioned the last time we were together, we know that there is an enormous amount of stress, even at our level as executives in the company. Sometimes we boast that, it, that we're piloting a rocket ship, but most of the time it feels like we're strapped to the side of a rocket ship. It's almost impossible for any of us to grow fast enough in our professional careers to keep up with the demands that the company is putting on it. And my hopeful message for you today is, it ain't gonna get any easier. It's not gonna get any easier because the stakes are just too high. It's not going to get any easier because almost no one is privileged enough in their lives to get to take a run, like the run that we're on right now. And we intend to take it as far as it will possibly go. Why? Why? Well, we don't have to. We've already far exceeded the wildest expectations of Caleb and Ben and I when we started the company. If we wanted boats, we could surely go buy boats. We could cash in, let you guys take it from here, and we could live lives of ease. But we're not doing that. Instead, we're pushing all of our chips back in. We're pushing all the money into investments in the future of the company. We're taking the biggest risks that we've ever taken in our lives because we have an affirmative vision for the future of this country. Because for too long, conservatives have responded to every new assault in the culture war with the same tired, nonprofit cycle of lose, complain, and beg for donations. Lose, complain, and beg for donations. Then you lose some more and complain some more and beg some more for some more donations. And all the while, the left takes over every single institution. The left drives us further and further out of our own culture. The left indoctrinates our children with radical gender and race theory. The left takes away the fruit of our labor. They take away our claim to our country. And we're just not going to put up with it anymore. We're going to do something different, something conservatives have not done in my lifetime. We're going to build a future. Not lament the past, not grieve the past, make something completely new. Something that's, yes, built on the foundation of the past, the best ideas of the past, the best values of the past, but not something trying to take us back to the past. Because the dirty secret is the past was just another time. It came with all of its own problems. In the 1950s, the nuclear, the nuclear family was in great shape, and black people couldn't drink from water fountains in certain states in the South. We don't want to replicate that. We want to take the first idea, the nuclear family, a really good idea, and use it to build a future, a future that has the nuclear family, and where black people can still drink from the same water fountains as everyone else, right? We're not idealizing what's gone before. We're learning from what went before. That's what the left doesn't want us to do. The left thinks that you can just throw away all the best lessons of history, and just imagine your way into a, in an idyllic sort of uh, utopian future. That's hubris. We're not hubristic here. We're delusional, but we're not hubristic. What do I mean by delusion? What I really mean is that we just believe in ourselves. We believe in this country. We're confident. We believe that our best days can be ahead. We believe that we can have a seat at the table, that our values can still be represented in the future but only if we're the ones actively building it. There is so much opportunity in the hubris of the left. They keep tearing our culture apart and paying no economic consequence. Why? Because they know that we still have to buy their goods and services. They know that we still need a good razor. They know that we still need good shoes. They know that we still need good entertainment. And so they can take for granted that we will keep paying them even as they tell us again and again and again that we have no real place in the world that they're building except to give them our money. That's why we started Jeremy's Razors. And I want to put a little context to that number I told you a moment ago, 
45,000 razors. 45,000 razor blade subscriptions, meaning recurring revenue into the future. That's 45,000 Americans who said, well, we've had enough. We don't have to give our money to people who obviously don't think we deserve their product. We can give it to someone who wants to communicate with us, who, who wants to represent our values. We can give them to someone who has an affirmative vision for the country. They can give it to me. <laughs> and that's what they're doing. And there are so many more of them. 45,000 is just the beginning. And razors are just the beginning. The hubris of the left has created an infinite sea of opportunity for us to go build new institutions, new corporations, a new way of living where we and our values are once again welcome. 45,000 Americans in just seven days. Why? Because we showed up because we chose to compete. You cannot win if you don't compete. And conservatives for too long have simply not been competing. And it makes sense, right? Why compete? We won. I mean, the 20th century was the American century. We essentially defeated all of our enemies uh, around the world. We defeated communism. We defeated Nazism. We put a man on the moon. We conquered powered flight. We had unbelievable American hegemony around the world. And like everyone who wins, you eventually get a little lazy. Victory makes you soft. But here's the thing, unlike a heavyweight champ in boxing who gets soft and ages out, we still have all the energy that we ever had. This company represents a whole new generation of Americans with traditional values. We have all of this energy to animate us as we get back in the fight. We didn't age out, we just took a reprieve. And what we're saying at The Daily Wire is it's time to get back in the fight. It's time to live like Americans. And by the way, you can't save America if you don't live like an American. And what does it mean to live like an American? Well, it means honoring our historic Christian values, of course. Honoring our historic political values, of course. But that's not all it means. It also means honoring our cultural values, the cultural values that made America so unique. There have been other countries filled with religious people. There have been other countries with novel and sometimes very sturdy political systems. American culture is what gave us the American century. And the American culture is truly different than anywhere else on earth. Americans are people with radically bad ideas. Ideas like, when we finish repairing these bicycles, why don't we see if we can conquer powered flight? Or ideas like, why don't we strap ourselves to the very top of an exploding bomb and see if it will shoot us into outer space? Those are very American ideas. Nobody else in the world does things like that. We're risk takers, we're innovators. And that's what the Daily Wire wants to bring back. So if Harry's Razors is our statement to America that you don't have to give your money to woke corporations who hate you, and if the Daily Wire itself historically has been our way of saying to Americans, you don't have to give your money to woke corporate media that obviously hates you, our movie company, Daily Wire Entertainment has been saying, you don't have to give your money to woke entertainment companies that obviously hate you. Where does that leave us now? Well, now it leaves us with Disney. Disney, 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 they're the gift that keeps on giving. They gave us Gina Carano. I think we should give them a round of applause for that. <laughs> and they learned absolutely nothing. They learned absolutely nothing from their defeat in Virginia because of the radicalization of children that was exposed by Luke Rosiak in Loudoun County. They learned nothing. And today, because of the great reporting of Chris Rufo, we got to see leaked footage from inside Disney of high up Disney employees saying things like, we have a not so secret gay agenda. Saying things like, we insert, we, we uh, make sure I get this quote right. We're adding in queerness wherever we can. And that, quote, no one is trying to stop the producer who was doing so. Another executive within the company said, if anything, we don't have enough LGBTQIA representation in content made for very small children. So what are we going to do about it? Well, we're going to do the same thing we always do. We're going to build 
alternatives. Americans have enormous economic might. They just don't have any alternatives. The Daily Wire is building those alternatives. And today, I'm proud to tell you that we will be launching Daily Wire Kids. And, and I want to be... I want to be clear that DW Kids is not a direct response to the leak tape that we heard from Disney today. We've been working on this for months. Some of you in the room have been a part of it, but we've kept it pretty close. We haven't let most of you in the, in the room know because it just wasn't ready. We wanted a huge announcement, and our plan was to roll out the announcement in November. Let's get past the politics of the midterm elections. Let's get past the Jeremy's Razors launch. Let's get past Terror on the Prairie. Let's get past What is a Woman. Let's get some open runway in front of us, and then let's announce DW Kids. That's the, that was the plan. Disney took that plan away from us because what they exposed today to the world is something that we've known all along, something that anyone working in the entertainment industry has known for a long time, that they are hell-bent on taking your children away from you. But what they did today is they exposed it to the whole world. And we want to say there is an alternative coming. We've been working on it for months, which is why I'm proud to tell you that three months ago, we hired our first two writers under DW Entertainment, Eric Branscombe and Ethan Nicole. Now, these are two writers who came to us by way of the Babylon Bee, one of the funniest websites in America today. But before that, they were the writers on Veggie Tales, the animated series. These guys have a deep history in animated kids content that has our values. There's six scripts in to our very first animated kids show, which is called Chilla Time. <laughs> Chilla Time is a family of chinchillas who homeschool their kids. And they don't homeschool their kids in sort of the, the normal way. There's not, there's not a lot of sitting around at tables. There's not a lot of arts and crafts. There's completely immersive insanity. When the Chilla parents want to teach their Chilla kids about George Washington, suddenly the kids find themselves fighting in the Revolutionary War. But things don't ever go quite like they're supposed to because, of course, we're the Daily Wire and we're not making polemics. So our goal isn't to make a piece of educational content. No, our goal is to make some really great kids' content that kids actually want to see, but where they gain some perspective. They gain a sort of baseline understanding uh, of what we might call cultural literacy. So there's no, there's no proof that as they act out the Revolutionary War, anything will actually happen the way it happened in history. But there is absolute you can count on the fact that it will be absolutely hilarious when it does happen. And more importantly, unlike Disney, which used to create wholesome content, which used to create content that parents could trust their children in front of, parents will be able to rest assured that their kids can watch DW Entertainment, DW Kids, excuse me, Entertainment, uh, without having to review it first and then explain to their kids why mommy and daddy don't actually agree with that TV show later. Our second piece of DW Kids content it's called Doodles with Noodles. And while it looks like another animated show, it actually isn't. This is just the only art we had on short notice. Doodles with Noodles is actually a live action puppet show in which our very own Ethan Nicole will teach kids how to do drawings alongside his friend, the puppet, Noodles. Unfortunately, while Noodles is very eager to participate in the drawing process, his drawings never quite turn out the way that Ethan intends. It's an absolutely hilarious concept, and we'll get to see kids actually learn skills that they don't have while, again, also being utterly entertained, which is our first goal with all of our entertainment content. Again, we're not making polemics. You know, we're not making Hillary's Hard Drive Part 3, and we're not making Hillary's Hard Drive Part 3 the animated series <laughs> for little kids. We're also not making, you know, with our entertainment content, you know, we're not making like conservative Christian content that people really want to want to see. We're making content that has underlying values that conservative Christians all agree upon, but that they actually want to see. 
Now with our kids' content, we'll play it much safer than with our adult content. Why? Because you're supposed to give kids a safe environment to be kids. You're not supposed to be challenging kids with radical new ideas. You're supposed to be able to trust your kids in a culture. The left has this phrase, they love to use it, it takes a village, they say, to raise a kid. If that ever meant anything, it should have meant a village is a collection of people who all share common values. It's supposed to mean that any adult can trust their child with any other adult. You can send your kids to school and assume that they're not going to have radical gender and race theories shoved on them. But we don't live in that village anymore. In fact, the tape that we saw today of those Disney employees was a direct response to a bill passed in Florida. They say it's the don't say gay bill. They say that because they're liars. They say that because they like to frame things up so that people won't use their critical thinking and realize what's actually taking place. The bill in Florida is specifically meant to say that very, very young children, the youngest of the young, the kind of kids who might like doodles with noodles or chilla time, probably have a right to go to school and not hear radical gender and race theory. To say that that shouldn't be too much to ask is, it's absurd to even think that that's a statement that would ever have to be made. If it ever did take a village to raise kids, it took a village you can trust. And unfortunately, in this modern America of ascendant leftism, you cannot trust the village with your kids. You will be able to trust DW Kids content with your kids. <laughs> Again, lest anyone think that this is us uh, simply grabbing the moment and trying to force a round peg into a square hole and we're, all we're doing is reacting to the news cycle. Well, we are reacting in terms of the timing of this announcement. But this project is well underway. As I said, we have six scripts already for Chilla Time. We're seven figures into this project and we are committed over the next three years to spending at a minimum $100 million on kids' content through DW Kids. That's in addition to the more than $100 million that we'll spend over the next three years on DW Entertainment for adults. How are we going to pay for it? 10% pay cuts across the board. <laughs> now we're going to pay for it because we believe that there is an underserved audience that is longing for these alternatives. There's an underserved audience that has just been waiting to purchase content that they can believe in, to give their money not to those woke corporations and woke media companies and woke kids entertainment companies that hate them, but to companies like ours that honor them, to companies like ours that represent them. We already have hundreds of thousands of dailywire.com paid subscribers. We need hundreds and hundreds of thousands more. Why? Well, because $100 million on entertainment content, $100 million on kids' entertainment content, $150 million run rate in the company. Those are giant numbers. I grew up, you know, middle class in a very small town in West Texas. I know that a million dollars sounds like an enormous number. $100 million sounds like an almost incomprehensibly big number. Disney in 2021 spent $25 billion on content alone. Netflix spent $17 billion on content alone. That's two. They own all of the media companies, all of the entertainment companies, all of the kids' entertainment companies. You hear numbers like that and you think, well, what's the point? There's no way that we can win. I don't see it that way. We need more money than we have, so we'll go make it. We need more money than we have, so we'll compete that much harder. We need more money than we have so that we can make even more content and do even more good. But we don't need $25 billion, and we don't need $17 billion, and we don't need those other billions and billions and billions of dollars. In fact, we have them. Because in my view, all that money is just marketing for us. Go ahead, Disney. Make $25 billion worth of content inculcating radical gender and race theory in children who are six years old. I don't have that money to spend on marketing. I'm glad you do. I know that 50% of everyone who encounters that content is going to want to come over to dailywire.com and subscribe here instead.
They'll like what we make more. They'll trust what we make more. And we're snipers, they're just machine guns. We'll hit the target every single time because we have to hit the target every single time, and they don't. And the funny thing is, they think that when they miss is when they don't have a queer lead in a movie aimed at children. That's when they think they're missing. I'm here to tell you, we'll never miss, and we're not aimed at the same target. What is all of this for? Well, as I said, it's for a positive vision of the future. It's because for too long, conservatives have believed that they could just preserve something, that they could hold on for dear life. Buckley used to say, conservatives stand athwart the rails of history, hollering stop, right? I don't think he used the word hollering. But that is a bad vision for conservatism. That is a losing vision for conservatism. That is not the vision that animates the people in this room. You are builders all. You are true Americans. You are innovators. You don't want to live in a decaying culture. You want to build an ascending culture. Our best days can be ahead. Walt Disney said we can accomplish, all of our dreams can come true if we believe. That's what we're saying. We have to believe in that future. I don't think that the future that the Disney company is building today is the future that Walt Disney dreamed of. I think that it's the future that's actually only being dreamed of by a tiny segment of radicalized, extreme left. I don't think that your average Democrat wants their kids having those values inculcated in them. I don't think that anyone in this country wants it except a tiny minority. So let them spend all of their money alienating everybody. And we'll be over here waiting. We'll be challenging them in commerce. We'll be challenging them in news and commentary. We'll be challenging them in entertainment. We'll be challenging them in kids' content. We believe in our Daily Wire audience. We believe that they will subscribe. In fact, if you're watching right now and you're not a dailywire.com subscriber, I'm asking you, not for a donation. I'm asking you, not begging. I'm asking you, go buy something, something of real value. Go buy a membership to the Daily Wire. Go buy a membership to Jeremy's Razors. Put your money where your mouth is. Come take part with us in building the future. In fact, if you go to dailywire.com slash build the future right now, you can become a dailywire.com member. If you want to, because I know the price is high, if you want to save a little money, you could use promo code build the future and we'll give you 45% off. Or don't, because we need all the money that we can get. What is it worth to you? What's it worth to you to have content that you can trust your children with? What's it worth to you to have entertainment that doesn't sucker punch you every time you turn it on? What's it worth to you to have a good shave without believing that the company that's selling you the razor wants to cut your throat? Figuratively. <laughs> What's it worth to you? I'm betting it's worth something. I'm betting everything that it's worth something. I'm betting that boat that I could have bought. Ben's betting that boat that he could have bought. Caleb's betting that boat that he's still might buy. <laughs> And none of us think Ben Shapiro was ever getting on a boat. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. We're betting all of that on the idea that Americans have just been waiting for these alternatives. And we're going to give them to them. Thank you, guys. singing the hits of Smokey Mike and the God King. <laughs> no, actually, I wasn't supposed to leave. As soon as I got off stage, they reminded me that I promised I would take questions at these things. So sorry for that. But I do appreciate you know, the applause that brought me back on stage. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? And we're also going to be taking questions from the online audience as well. Is this? There we go. I have the questions from our staff. We have a couple. Um, Casey asked that we have just gotten... 45,000 orders of Jeremy's razors. Mm. What is next? So the question is, we just got 45,000 orders for Jeremy's razors. What's next? And the answer is we have to build a razor company. The razors are real. This box says Jeremy's razors on it. That's a real box. This is a real bag. And it has the little 
forward flag on it, the Daily Wire flag. And here is a beautiful Jeremy's razor. I know a lot of people online weren't sure if the whole thing was a joke. It's very real. What we have is razors. What we have is shave cream and post-shave balm, and they're great. What we don't have is a single employee for our razor company. <laughs> <laughs> and so what we've been doing uh, over the last week is moving very quickly to stand up a, a business that can actually support the amount of enthusiasm that exists out there. We have a team that's been in LA, uh, in Southern California, not in LA, uh, for the last several days, sourcing what our next products will be. We need shampoo, we need, uh, we need conditioner, we need hair gels, we need all the things that make a great men's grooming line. And we need a woman's grooming line, because it turns out 50% of our customers aren't men. <laughs> Not something we anticipated when we launched uh, Jeremy's Razors. Uh, and we need people who can do all the logistics, all the sourcing, all the fulfillment. We need people who can help us solve one of the age-old problems in this country, which is uh, not age-old, but generation-old, which is that America exported all of its manufacturing infrastructure. Much like the people watching this at home on their iPhones or on their uh, laptops or on their computers or even on their TVs, these razors aren't manufactured in America, just like that TV and that laptop and that iPhone that people are watching on were not manufactured in America. We didn't export America's manufacturing infrastructure overseas. That's just the world that we were born into. And bringing that manufacturing infrastructure back to America is beyond the capacity of a one-week-old razor startup. That takes enormous economic might. But it's not beyond the economic might of a strong and successful razor company, which is why it's a shame that Gillette or Schick or Harry's or Dollar Shave Club or any of the giants in the field haven't move to bring their manufacturing back to America. And it's why we're proud that, in success, the Daily Wire is committed to doing just that. If we sell one million razor subscriptions, we will build our razors in America. <laughs> and if we don't get to a million subscribers, maybe we'll put enough pressure on those other razor companies that they'll bring their manufacturing back to America. All right, I'll ask the second one as you're putting all that away. Alex wants to know, how do you think woke companies will respond to these endeavors? Well, how do I think woke companies will respond to our endeavors? Harry's Razors chose to ignore us. Now, they didn't quite ignore us. They turned off all of their social posting for a week. They turned off all of their social advertising on Facebook and other platforms for a week. And one of their co-CEOs did mumble off something about hate speech, because apparently it's hate speech to say that boys are boys and girls are girls. It's hate speech to say that, there are, that, there, that gender follows a biological sexual construct. I don't know when it became hate speech. It certainly wasn't hate speech 15 years ago when every single person on the modern left believed exactly that or for any of the thousands of years of human history leading all the way back to the book of Genesis where it says male and female he made them. In other words, it can't be hate speech to believe what the vast majority of humans alive today and all of human beings alive 15 years ago and throughout all of human history have believed. It's an absurd notion. But it's his way of saying, no, 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 it's not conservatives that I hate, it's just, you know, hate speech believed by all conservatives and most Democrats. It, Again, keep talking. I wish that we had a marketing budget just to market the things that they say and believe, because that's how we're gonna sell these razors. So we're standing up a razor company, that's the first thing. We're looking into uh, uh, ways to make a, a, a woman's version of this and a woman's cosmetic line. And we're looking at so many other companies. Tucker Carlson said, uh, when, when I was on his show last week, he said, it's like he had this revelation, he said, you could do this with anything, and he's right and we intend to. All right, I'm gonna move on to the questions that we've gotten from the live audience. We have a few here. So when will DW Kids release its first show? Yep. 
Well, our hope is to have something out by the end of 2022. The animated content, like Chilla Time, will be the spring of 2023. And the reason for that is it takes about 12 months to animate this content. Animation is much slower than physical production. Physical production, you point a camera at something and the something exists. Obviously, that's not the case with animation. Uh, it's a very painstaking process. But as you can see, we're far along in story development, far along in script writing, far along in character development. Uh, so as I say, we will have some kids offering by the end of this year, and we will have a full slate uh, of kids content by spring of 2023. Not just these two shows. By spring of 2023, uh, we fully expect to have four shows for kids on the platform, four series. Got it. Another question is, how does one apply to work for slash with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you go to careers at dailywire.com. And I'll just tell you what I said at the beginning of these remarks. This is not an easy place to work. We're driven. We're on a mission. We're trying to do something that no one has done in our space in our lifetime. Uh, we're trying to navigate incredibly shark-infested waters. And so we all work hard. You know, we have a coastal work ethic. We come to work to work. Um, but we also believe in that definition of happiness from antiquity, which says happiness is pouring your best efforts into the thing that you believe in the most. So in that sense, it's a wonderful but challenging place to work. We want the best. If you're the best, go over to careers at dailywire.com. We'd love to have you. Fantastic. Will there be a separate DW Kids app? No. What there will be is parental filters on the existing app. And the app itself, as we currently understand it, is undergoing seismic change. Uh, by the time the DW Kids content rolls out, the way that people interact with our app will have changed already. And then that new content will accompany another change, which is the parental filters. So much like when you go to Disney Plus or when you go to Netflix, uh, when you go to Hulu, when you go to any of these apps, you, you set whether or not a child is watching or an adult is watching. Uh, if you're a child, you'll get Chilla Time and you know, the videos of PragerU, and, which are on our platform, and content like that. If you're uh, an adult, you'll get the DW adult entertainment content, some of our harder political content. Uh, sadly, everyone will probably still get Michael Knowles, but there will be some, <laughs> there will be some sorting of content that goes on. All right, we've gotten this one a few times, which is positive. What was the promo code? <laughs> Build the future. Build the future, perfect. That's what we're doing, we're building the future. That's what conservatives haven't done, they have not built the future. The only way to build the future is for people to use that promo code. <laughs> uh, let's see, is there any plans for preteen slash teen shows? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I read a terrific uh, script just this last week um, that is a live action show aimed at uh, teens. Um, and I think that some of our, you know, not in this first year, but some of our second year entertainment content, even what we're calling adult entertainment, uh, will actually have more like a CW type uh, feel to it. So I think that you know, we'll have very specifically kids content by spring of 2023. By the end of 2023, we'll have more of what you would call four quadrant content where adults and kids together can engage in, in you know, really high action or really high fantasy. Perfect. And our last question is how can I invest? <laughs> well, make your check payable to God King, lowercase g, <laughs> lowercase k. Uh, you know, the Daily Wire took investment when we first started the company. In 2015, a high net worth family out of Texas uh, gave us an, what at the time was an enormous uh, commitment. They committed seven and a half million dollars to help launch the Daily Wire. We spent over 14 months about 4.7 million of those 7.5 million dollars, and then we quit spending it. And we never went back and took any more of it. Because in month 14, the company became cash flow positive. And so since 2016, basically, we've powered all of the growth of the company out of our cash flow. We've grown everything just with the money that we make. We never wanted to go back to that investor well. In particular, we didn't want to go to it early for a couple of reasons. One, because we wanted to be a for-profit company, not just a for-profit company in name only. We wanted to be a company that actually made profit. Our original mantra for Caleb, our co-CEO, Ben, co-founder, me, we would say to each other all the time, Make $1 more than you spend. That was the mantra of the company. Make $1 more than you spend. Why? Well, because so much of the right is powered by a nonprofit mentality. 
Even certain for-profit companies on the right are effectively nonprofit companies. They run out of a nonprofit mentality. And that nonprofit mentality, as I said earlier, can far too often be lose, complain, beg for donations. The nonprofit mentality is a losing mentality. That's not to say there aren't great nonprofits on the right. There are. There aren't many. There are great nonprofits on the right, and there are many, many, many terrible nonprofits on the right who exist to take money from donors to make them feel like they're accomplishing something while losing every single important fight. We did not want to be a part of that cycle. We think that it's a shame that the political movement that purports to believe in market capitalism, that purports to believe in, the free, in free exchange uh, or free markets, almost exclusively uses nonprofit mechanisms to promulgate our worldview. And we think it's a shame that the other side, which purports to hate capitalism and purports to hate big business, almost exclusively uses market means, market mechanisms to promulgate their worldview. By our own worldview, we're going to lose. We picked the, the less efficient mechanism. So we wanted to be a true for-profit company. <coughs> now that said, as we've grown, we've realized that there's, there's more to being a for-profit company than paying for everything out of cash flow. You have to have access to capital markets eventually to scale. Almost all major for-profit companies operating at scale have had to access capital. Now that doesn't mean you know, being beholden to a single billionaire owner who you know, sometimes can wield a company as, as almost like a train set. Uh, it means real capital markets. It means real debt instruments. It means perhaps even public capital markets. Uh, and we've been in talks as an executive team about if and when we will need access to those capital markets. Today, we don't. Today, we're not looking for investors in the core business. Tomorrow, we might. What it really is going to come down to is can we keep up with the growth without accessing that capital. If we need that capital, we're certainly not going to make any sort of uh, uh, offhand commitment never to access that kind of capital. Absolutely not. Obviously, every single company on Wall Street is, on Wall, you know, is publicly traded because they want access to capital markets. Again, Disney is slotted to spend $33 billion on content in 2022, $25 billion on content in 2021. A day may come where we think the only way to compete is to access those markets. But what we want is to control our destinies. What we want is to control this company. What we want is to make sure that we're not subject to the whims, whims of the current ESG uh, movement, which is environmental and social governance, which is this movement in public markets and with institutional capital investors to essentially say, the only way you can have our money is if you become what you hate. If you, if you peddle uh, climate hysteria, if you peddle uh, gender and racial uh, division in the country. We're not willing to subject ourselves to those currents, and so we don't want to take that kind of capital until we're absolutely certain that our future is secure. And that means growing under our own power for as long as possible, and maybe forever. I'll leave you with this if there are no more questions. I know it's with affection that you all call me the God King, lowercase g, lowercase k. I've given a lot of thought to why Andrew Clay, by the way, the left likes to say the self-proclaimed God King. And I'm like, I didn't proclaim myself the God King. Andrew Clavin proclaimed me the God King. <laughs> I've given a lot of thought to why Andrew Clavin did that. And I think that it's for two reasons. One is because we were building something fun and irreverent, something that didn't exist, something that hadn't existed on the right before. And so he thought that it was good that we have a kind of irreverent way of referring uh, to the guy in charge. But I think that there's a little more to it, too. I think that he wanted to make sure that I never confused myself with the uppercase variety. He wanted to make sure that I kept my own hubris in check and made sure that I stayed on mission. And our mission is obviously not to advance the whims uh, of the lowercase gk, but hopefully to build a future founded uh, on the truths that we learned from the uppercase guy. So I'll leave you with this thought from the uppercase guy. It's the uppercase guy who commands that man be optimistic. It's the uppercase guy who says, be fruitful, multiply, lift up now thine eyes to the horizon, leave the land of your fathers and go into the land that I have promised you. That's a call to walk to a future. That's a call to believe in hope that there's something better ahead, that our best days aren't merely behind. 
It's a command to creativity. It's a command to build the future. So that's what we're going to do. Thanks, guys.